Hey guys, welcome to another one of our reviews. Uh, I'm the Worm, this is the Problem. Uh, today is a little bit weird. We're going to be doing. Wire and Wick. Yeah, it's um, loads of different things that you can use for rebuilding basically. Uh, there is going to be a bit of mesh in there, which is just going to be a shine of it rather than anything else. But we. Bit of still rope again because we've kind of gone over that before as well. But Yeah, we did receive all these free charge from uh, charlie'sfakeshop.co.uk. So big shout out to Charlie, thank you for that, mate. Um, but yeah, I am going to show you the mesh, but I'm not going to show you anything done with the mesh this time because it takes a lot of prep work with mesh. I mean, if you re if you uh, type in YouTube mesh, you'll see how much work goes into it and why it's not going to be done on a little close up. Indeed. Um, what we've got today? What we're going over? Going uh, over. We've got wool. We've got eco wool, um, which we're going to have a little play with and see how we get on with it. Three different ribbons. Cap or ribbon. Um, obviously, in comparison to your traditional cap or wire, uh, and again. We'll go over and have a play with that as well. Um, and just a little talk about mesh. And a little talk about whatever else we've got as well, yeah. um, which is all well and good. Uh, kind of the differences, a bit of the particulars about it, just to kind of get you a bit more informed about it, if you needed to be a bit more informed about it. Because uh, we did when we received it. Yeah. Um, the main yeah. one was the eco wall, because it's yes. kind of a new thing. Apparently it's meant to be the Ferrari of the wall wicking stuff. Indeed, and a lot of people were <laughs> and raving about it. Um, the Charlie was nice enough to send it down to us, which is obviously fantastic, as well as the cat or ribbon, because people have been ranting around about that as well. Um, well, I'm actually going to do a review for you today. Um, what do you reckon? DDA? DDA. DDA. Um, with some bits and bobs, and we've got some other stuff on the go as but well. We're going to show you everything down, up close, talk and about it all, and then, well, and not then, massive talk, but. It probably will end up being quite a big talk. No, just a discussion about it when we're actually showing it, and then a massive talk when we come back up to us. Hopefully. We'll try and get that uh, close up a little bit quick so you can see our beautiful faces. Indeed. <laughs> no, right, guys. I think we're going to get that down now. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. All right, we'll chuck it down now, guys. We'll have a little re week for you, show you a couple of bits and bobs, um, and then our usual flappery on the other side. Hey, guys. Welcome down to the close up. Uh, this is obviously all the stuff we got from Charlie, minus the mesh that we got, which is over in my drawer in a nicely uh, hardened envelope, so it doesn't bend or anything. But uh, just have a word for it, it's 400 grade mesh that he sent us. It's a really good wicking material. It works very well on um, your 50 50 juices, we seem to find, which is what we vape anyway. It seems to be the best for us anyway. But uh, right, let's crack on. These are the ribbons. You've got a 3, a 4, and a 5 mil. Sweet. 0.5 mil. And these are up close. Sorry, guys, I'm not doing my job here. <laughs> I'm doing a worm. There we go. I've labelled them all up. You can see. Just about the difference in thickness there. They are, because I've laid them at the top just so you can tell. But the three is very thin, then you've got your four and your five. You've got that count fold to show. The count fold. This is a little bit of a 32 gauge count fold. Next to it, it's comparable to, I'd say, the three more than anything. But yeah, that's that's the ribbons up close. I do want to undo them on the spool because number five likes to just go psh, everywhere. <laughs> uh, Obviously, we've got an uh, eco wall, one mil. I'll take this out quickly. Just a little end. Actually, one mil eco wall. This button's not focusing again. Sorry, I'm waiting. <laughs> There's one mil eco wall. I've got some two mil silica right next to me. I'm just going to show you the difference in size. Your two mil silica is pretty much the same as your one mil eco wall. So I don't know how that works out, but it is more oval this eco wall. It yeah, it's not quite cylindrical round. round. It's is it an angle there. It's kind of almost twice as wide as it is thick. If that makes sense, you can't see it there. So it's almost two on the thick and one on the uh, actual side. So I guess that's where they're taking the measurements from on these eco walls because you'll see as we go up, they do expand quite drastically. <laughs> expand. Uh, I'm going to go straight up to one point five. Uh, this one's actually a bit. This one's actually quite round, actually. There you go. It's quite cylindrical, the 1.5. That's it compared to the two mil silica. Pretty much it's exactly the same size. Yeah, it's funny. Isn't it? Although this eco wall does feel a little bit tighter woven, so. Yeah, those of you don't like, don't know, and we didn't. Uh, the eco wall is, is silica, um, basically it's used as a um, insulating material, from what I can read and what we can gather. Um, I have no idea what I was going to say. Oh, it's basically braided, as opposed to sort of your silica sort of twisted. This is more like a braided, like a rope, than it is a wick. 
can tell. This is the two mil, which is actually more like three on the on the actual flat surface. Again, this one is more oval. And if I bring in the two mil silica here, 0.2, it's about the same sort of size in from the top. What about from the uh, oh, from the size? Yeah. It's about three, I'd say. I thought maybe this, three I and a half. Some three mil wig, and I think that's to be honest, it looks slightly bigger that way. Than probably about three and a half. Yeah. So, but there are there about guys. I mean, obviously, it's going to change when you get your uh, wire around that. It's going to close in a little bit, obviously. Well, that still feels sort of more tightly woven. It is a bit more spongy than silica is. This is the three mil. It, it is. <laughs> It's a shoelace. <laughs> it's more than a shoelace. I reckon like a parasail down off a bloody building with this bloody stuff. <laughs> it's quite a thick one. This it regal. is. Um, but for juice retention, really good. Yeah, it is really, really good. It's, it just it sucks up as usual. Like, we've tried this in a few drippers now. Not the 3 mil. I've used the 2 and the 1.5. And literally, you put the juice in and it just is gone into the wick. It's just, it sucks it up so, so well. It's just, it's, um, it's a straw. It, it's, yeah, it is. It really is. I mean... I did notice with the three that there was like a when you push it together, it kind of it's where it's woven, like yeah, that, isn't it? Same woven like a shoelace. But it does it more on the three than it does on the other. So I'm assuming there's a lot of air in this three, which is obviously going to help it wick like an animal. Uh, like I said, I haven't used the three yet, but we are going to wick a DDA for you is quickly. Job to the done. There we go. Look at that. I've got some free mill. Which is more like 20 mil. <laughs> it, is, it is nice and big, but to be honest, if you're using several wraps, like in a DDO, we use like four pieces of whip or cut of horseshoes, just once is enough. <laughs> that is it, that's all you're going to need. I've got some uh, 0 0.5 millimeter ribbon. I haven't flamed this. For some for, for, I don't know what it is, but with the ribbon, I seem to find it easier unflamed. Mr. Parton still flames his. I his. find it easier flamed, but so, again, guys, as we've said in several videos, you re -wick to your preference. If you find it easier flamed, then flame it. If you find it easier unflamed, now so this up. this is all going to go wrong, and it's just going to disintegrate on me. Time to have a laugh at the worm. No, we don't laugh at the worm. We really? laugh at you. No, okay. laugh at the worm. Um, standard procedure when you're wrapping with ribbon, the same as um, wire. Obviously, the only thing you need to be aware of is that you're going around without twisting that wire. Obviously, you want that flat. With the, with the cab ribbon, the idea of it is basically it gives you more surface area without reducing your ohms ridiculously. Because um, obviously something like 0.5 candle wire would be incredibly big um, and seriously low ohms. I, I, I don't know what the ohms are, but I'd imagine you're looking only just in the double figures uh, for a meter. So um, unless you want seriously low risk coils, not what you want. But I personally, um, me anyway, find it easier to actually re-wick with ribbon than I do with uh, your standard candle wire. I'm not quite happy with that. I'm just going to tighten the, the middle two up. They seem to have gone loose a little bit. Slag coils. Um, when it comes to this, when I first got it and you kind of do look at it and you compare it to a bit of points with candle, especially when using something like DDA with holes in the post, um, I kind of assumed it was going to be a bit more difficult to fit it through. Um, can't say it is, to be honest with you. I mean, I know there are varying sizes in Canthal ribbon, same as there are in Canthal wire, um, but up to the 0.5, we've had no issues at all putting it into any uh, dripping at E uh, or RBA. You ready for a little bit of close up just saying show yeah, the coil? I'm, I was born ready. Look at that. that. There we go. Look at that. That's my coil at the moment. Before I put it in, it's pretty much spot on. So we're just going to... Standard DDA procedure. Yeah, DDA procedure. The reason we're using the DDA, one, is it's nice and easy to re -whip. You've got a lot of space. Um, and two, I think it's going to be forgiving when it comes to how much wall and juice you can put in it. Um, so which is always good. Well, it's just slotting it through the holes. Makes it look easy. Mainly because it is quite easy now compared to a lot of the other drivers and stuff we've got. Um, those of you guys don't know how to rebuke a DDA, we've done a video on it, but you're basically seeing it now. Although I've kind of got it like that at the moment, which I kind of wanted it the other way. Why you... No, you can't on this one. Uh, see, see, this is Wormwick's uh, wrap, sorry, left-handed, whereas I wrap right-handed. So on a DDA, you're right, sorry, mate. DDA, the uh, right-handed way, doesn't do what is happening there because the post holds us. You know what we're going to do, guys? We're going to rip this off and we're going to do it again. Right-handed. Right-handedly. So, it has been a while since I whipped the DDA and I did forget that I have to do it right handed. 
which is a little bit annoying, but it happens. What can you do? So, a quick video turning into what could be an epic episode. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it is one of those ones. But um, I have no idea what I was about to say. I've completely lost train of thought because I was laughing at the worm. Well, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't I, exactly? Um, as Worm touched on, a lot of guys on the forums are saying this is absolutely epic and we have we have tried it um, we are going to save our opinions up until we're back up in front of you because we've been vaping and opinions can change as quick as that um, so we obviously want to confirm our opinions before we give them anyway but um, high hopes um, we had and still do have to be honest with you um, we both played around with it a bit in several different devices um, and as silica, it has its ups and downs, of course, and we'll make sure we get all those in for you. To be fair, we, we, we tried it, and then we still had like bits and bobs that we still had lying around that we wanted to kind of use up. So we kind of used it up before coming back to this, and I've used it since. And I've, I, I do uh, wrap my uh, A7 in it quite a bit. And I think it's all right, it's just... <laughs> obviously we're well, holding the opinions until after I am trying to hold it in <laughs> it's hard not to talk about it guys because obviously uh, I, to be honest, I want to have a bait before I sort of give my full two cents on this because um, I, I have used it um, and I haven't played around with it anywhere near as much as I've played around with other things like mesh and rope and silica um, and in this instance when it comes to sort of vaping when you've got a new device and you'll you'll use it for the first time and if you've been using one one device or a couple of devices religiously you get on the same else and your opinions won't be what they should be necessarily because you're kind of comparing it to something else that you've climatized to um i think also when we've had uh, we've bought quite a few new devices recently and um you basically want to wick it with stuff you know what's going to happen with it yeah definitely and you, you kind of play safe for the first couple of times just so you know where that butter zone is so when you're testing it new you can tell whether it's good or bad. Yeah, not a reflection on the device, the, the materials you're using in the device as opposed to the device itself. Uh, this uh, ribbon, guys, it is a little bit uh, tough when it comes to doing the spinning technique, especially on your drippers. So we always seem to snip when we're using this 0.5. You can do it with the 0.3 quite easy, but the 4 is kind of like a midway, and uh, it's not overly terrible, but it does give you a little bit of aggro. I'm just going to snip these up, clean these up a little bit. As you can see, you do when when it comes to this eco wall, there is a lot of coverage. There's a lot of um, sort of juice holding potential in those wicks because of the size of them. With this three mil, but to be honest with you, with the the two, the one, the one point five, it's all kind of it does it does soak that juice up nice and quick, uh, and it holds it. Um, which is good, especially if you're dripping because you don't want to have a pool of juice in something like a Zeus 7 in an IGO or something like that. It's designed for it, but in this kind of circumstance, uh, not so much. Right, I'm just going to test this on my provider quickly, guys. Sorry. <laughs> 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 he hasn't done it in a while. I think he's been missing it. Yeah, well, I've, I've actually got it in mini mode once, guys. Well, I know I said I don't use it in this very often, but my 8500 batteries keep fucking up for some reason, so. What he means is they're not performing quite right. Fucking up, <laughs> yes. <laughs> quite sure that's what I said. I speak of the English. English, yeah. Are you testing this thing or are we having a date or what? I would like to get the coil off the actual post first, if that's alright. Nope. He's got no patience, guys. No patience whatsoever. Well. <laughs> <laughs> he just ran to me the only comes through I reckon 1.4. Low. <laughs> Whoa, you've got a hot spot there, definitely. Shorting. Making contact with Sank. The issues with re wicking on camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in our standard procedure. Oh my dear god, I am brilliant. 1.4. <laughs> he says I like what a massive dick. <laughs> uh, power down, I think. No, it's on 4. Point. Put it on 4. Just because a provider does push more consistently than any other device out there. So, is it going to light up? With, that's something I have noticed with this um, can bowl uh, ribbon. Is that your first couple of sort of pushes will take a little bit longer to light, especially seeing as worm didn't flame it in the first place. What we're going on over there? You got lighting on? Yeah, yeah. It's starting to get there. There we go. 
and those two are very hot there in the middle and the others are doing alright it will spread out there mate um, that's one thing we should point out with this eco wall is that you don't want to dry burn it too much it is I mean it is silica but it just doesn't seem to have the same level of heat resistance as silica no does. it seems to uh, die very quickly it's not very quickly it's not like cotton or anything compared to but compared to silica you can't dry burn it as much before it starts to affect the uh, taste that you're getting uh, especially from sort of drippers and stuff like that. if you're using stainless steel mesh and that kind of thing then you burn it to your heart's content but um, it, with the uh, eco wall and uh, eco wall sorry you can't you, you can't seem to hold it as much you can't seem to push it as hard um, right guys but yeah that's the 3 mil uh, wick with the 0.5 ribbon these are all our other ones. We will let you update you in the comments later as we use the other ones to tell you what's going on with them. But we're going to do the three with the one uh, with the five at the moment. Three with the five. Three with the five. So we we'll go back to us, up to us, and have a bait. Welcome back up, guys. Uh, that was obviously the showing and telling of everything that we had got. Lots of wick, lots of wire, and bits and bobs. And bits and bobs, yeah. Um, Wait, wait, are we doing? I'm just going to quickly just because I didn't do a close up. That is the 400 mm mesh we got. That's half of it, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, that's 499 for an A5 sheet and a 325 400 500 grade mesh for Charlie. So that's lovely stuff, pretty good price, I think. Um, so if you want some mesh, hit Charlie. Um, to be honest with you, Charlie's got a bit of everything. He's got everything you need can file, uh, you've got the ribbon, no resistance wire, wall, the whole shebang. So, drip tips, good for not so much. I'm talking about for rebuilders, <laughs> to be honest with you, whatever. Um, drip tips, you can use drip tips in rebuilders. Oh my god, where? <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, uh, I think, first of all, should we cover the, uh, I think we'll cover the um, ribbon um, first, and then we'll move on to the wall. Um, now, with the ribbon, obviously when you've got your canthal wire, you've got certain resistances for certain gauges, um, it's just how it is, it's the same with ribbon. We've got the gauges for you, um, and we'll be able to tell you what resistance is to make it relatable if you're using canvas wire as of now and you want to give this a go, but not sure what width you should be getting. Um, so, excuse me whilst I'm looking up here. Basically, your 0.2 canvas, your 32 gauge canvas, is just a, a touch under 44 ohms per square meter. Um, if you want to find out what that is by the square foot, please feel free to do the calculations. Right? But for square meter, um, you've got 44 ohms canvas ribbon, which Generally, we find on a formula of silica wick, four wraps are going to give you between 1.6 and 2 ohms, depending on how tight you're wrapping the balls or so on and so forth. Um, and how much wick you've got in there. Indeed. Now, your 0.3, especially 0.3 by 0.1 mil um, of canvas ribbon, is 48.5 uh, ohms. So we're a touch above, a touch higher than 32 gauge canvas with the 0.3. All right, so you're going to be up by about 0.1 of an ohm, depending on how many reps you're doing, and you've got also 0.1, 0.3, whatever it is, depending on how many reps you go with. Um, so that's kind of, if you like 32 gauge and you want to try a ribbon, that'd be sort of where we'd probably recommend that you go for, um, depending on what you want, obviously. Uh, your 0.4 is 37 ohms uh, per meter. Uh, that relates, it's in the middle of... 0.25 and 0.2 can fall. You know, like 0.25 would be your 30 gauge, 0.2 would be your 32 gauge can fall. Um, your 30 gauge can fall is 29 ohms per square meter, uh, and obviously 32 ohms, we just said is 44. So 37 sort of in the middle. So if you have to say a touch lower than 32 gauge, but don't want to go as last 30 gauge, then try your 0.4. And your 0.5 is 30.2 ohms per square meter, and your, as we just said, your 0.25 or your 30 gauge can dog is 32, so that's a touch lower. Your 0.5 is a touch lower than your 30 gauge. There you go. That's kind of what the gauges are and the resistances of that wire, just so you're aware when you're buying. Done? Yeah, yeah I thought <laughs> I'd just get it out there. Oh, I didn't know if you were going to move on to anything more. No, I thought I'd just get the, the wire done out of the way. That's obviously like one of the main questions we got asked when we first said we're playing with Campbell Ribbon is what resistance is what? We have no idea. A lot of people were saying, no. so there you go. That's what that is. I mean, personal preference of mine on the wire is the three at the moment. I don't know why. I just, I just feel it works better for me. So that's just how it is. But like the point uh, the fives and the four it just seems to take a second for your call to actually start producing favor so you kind of like well yeah it, I mean, it totally depends on the resistance of your call my personal preference out of these three is 0.5 
I like things, it's no secret, I like them lower, I like them higher. Honestly, I would like to go bigger, <laughs> I'd like a 0.7 or something, make it like 28 gauge kind of resistance. Um, now, what kind of ill effects that would have on how quick your device can wick, I don't know, but I'd like to try. Or well, how quick you can drain your battery. In the, well, it's no quicker than 28 gauge, is it? It's the same, sorry guys, 0.7 if it's out there, it's the same resistance as 28 gauge. Um, 28 gauge tends to be what I use, but I do tailor it for device. So in something like an A7, I will probably use 30 gauge um, or 28, depending on what I feel like, or 0.5 pound for ribbon. Um, something more like a DDA, I'd probably stick with what I know, which is 32 in that, just because it works and we know it works. So it, there's no one set gauge for what you're doing no, if you have several devices. It is, it is all going to depend down onto what kind of temperature you want to run at, what kind of ohmage you want to run at. So you can kind of tailor it either way and switch it around and all kinds of things. It's completely the whole point of rebuildables is that you can do as and what you please with it. I mean, take him, he takes a DDA and goes, oh, I need another drill hole, so I'll just do a drill core there. Oh, <laughs> and then wraps like a 2.0 coil, sticks stack badges in a mod and blows his head off. He enjoyed it. <laughs> But, but yeah, it's each to their own. It's each, I mean, if you, it's hard to say what you want because we don't know what you want to do. But what I would say is, if you want a test for what the differences are between ribbon and your standard resistance wire, most of you will be using 32 gauge. If you're not, you will have used it and you know what it tastes like and how it performs in a specific device. Buy the point three that's closest to 32 gauge. Do a similar amount of reps and then side by side them and see if you like it. If you like it, then buy more of the ribbon in different gauges to play about with. That's, yeah. That is what I would recommend. Um, we haven't actually seen the price of the ribbon. It is 499 for five, five, 10 meters. 10 meters. 10 meters. Uh, I think it's a very good price. It's a very good price. It, it's kind of in competition with everyone else. It's, I wouldn't say it's massively cheaper, but it is slight. It's definitely a fair price, there's no choice about that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's slightly cheaper than most sites we've seen, and you're getting 10 meters and you're about to go with like your fives, and I just feel like the 10 meter one is a little bit better, and you've taken all the stuff. They're over there. And they're over there, and the spindle you get on it is a nice bulky one instead of a nice little, tiny little thing that you can potentially lose. You're not going to lose that thing, it, is, it does come on a very nice spindle. So. Oh yeah, so that's a good point, it's nice you do get on a spindle as opposed to a bit of card or in a bag and loose, um, which some but sites too do, it's so annoying. We've had some from a previous site which was on a tiny little spindle and I don't take it out because I can see me losing it quite easily. Whereas this thing is a big plastic thing, it's not huge by any standard or anything, it's just big enough that you're not going to lose it, but not so big that it's not uncomfortable to take around with you if you need to. There you go. Um, now. We'll get onto the price of the Eco Wall straight away, I think, uh, as we're doing prices. Eco Wall is available in 1, 1.5, 2, and 3 uh, millimeter lengths. As you see, we just sort of had a little chat about it whilst it was down on the table. Um, the 3 is big. If you're used to using sort of 3 millimeter, the 3 meter, 3 millimeter silica, um, then the Eco Wall is going to be big compared to what you're used to. I would say you're going to need to go sort of a, a 4 mil silica to match that kind of width, maybe even higher than that. If you're used to uh, like Three mil silica. I would personally go with the two mil uh, eco wall. So to give you the same kind of size anyway. Yeah, I mean this three mil is freaking like an animal. Don't get me wrong, but it is bigger. Yeah. There's not many things like if you're talking about rebuilding overheads and that. <laughs> you ain't gonna get three mil in now. <laughs> you ain't, you ain't yeah, getting yeah. three mil in now. It ain't working now. Um, single. In your drippers, you'll probably be fine. You may have to like use a one, lot less. One piece basically. Yeah, and a lot less of it because you're not gonna get loads of it down into the well or anything like that it's just literally going to be and it's there yeah um sorry guys price is 250 per meter which dependent on where you go what you get um and the size that you're buying and whether it changes um is about the same as silica on an average okay silica is between two and three quid a meter this is slap bang in the middle of that yeah so it's again very reasonably priced again they're competing with every other one you're not going to get it much lower unless you're going to bulk buying and then you've got 50 odd meters and stuff and you're never going to use it so <laughs> you may as well be your own shop indeed um in terms of using the wick to actually wick with um an ease of use and how easy we find it to use personally for 
your point, your your one mil, your point one, and even your two. I don't find that any more difficult to use than you would with just your stain, your stain, your plain silica. To be honest, I find it a little bit easy because it doesn't seem to thray as quickly. You know, it kind of straddles at the bottom. I think it's a lot tighter way, but yeah, there's a lot it, more going on. Yeah. It, it doesn't seem to like unravel on you as quick. So when you're trying to jam it into your dribble down the side and that, it doesn't seem to fall apart instantly. <laughs> it, it, yeah, yeah. You, you do get a few jabs before it starts going. Eh. However, <laughs> using using the three mil. Um, it is, it is, it's a bit girthy. It is a bit for certain device. I mean, in my A7, I've got no chance of getting a free mil in now. Um, your Zeus will probably take it just. You'll take one of them. You won't take a horseshoe. No, no chance. I don't think any, if any drippers really will take a horseshoe. Maybe in the I go oh, just, just. <laughs> um, it took it like a man. <laughs> maybe in the I go don't like that, but if you've got a sort of a micro drip or what I would class it like I go S and um, to some extent. Oh, no chance. You, yeah, you haven't got much chance <laughs> of getting it in there to finish with you. Um, but, it does hold an incredible amount of juice this compared to sort of your standard silica where it's like and it kind of clear with this you just keep dripping it it's like, like a sponge literally i'll put um just out of hypothetically now i put my normal two bits of uh silica in there two mil wrapped a call in there it would, it would wick it up nicely i'd be able to drop maybe 10 drops in there before it started ripping out the side i think i put about <laughs> We're talking, you primed it with about 15 drops before yeah and you then got... I dripped on top of it straight away and so it's about about 25 to 30 drops in there and it still didn't leak through so this thing it just it, it, it does hold a lot um should we get on to performance of the silica versus eco wall style thing magic um and then chuck the can for ribbon in there as well i like it i really do I, i've used mainly the uh, the two and the 1.5 and I've used it in my Zeus more than anything, or well, actually the only thing I've used it in actually, to be honest. Um, the only issue I have with it is that when you do, normally when the silica, you get like a like a dry taste instead of like a full flavor taste before you start to really know your juice is going. In this, you get a slight woolly taste. It's not unbearable by any means, but it's um it's a weird taste and uh, it's not. I would prefer just the dry taste. But other than that, when it's working well. It performs better than silica. Um, for me, it's a bit of a it's a mixed bag with this. You, it, it's like you take with one end, uh, you give one end, you take with the other. For me, anyway, um, as Worm said, you get it, and it's all it's saturated really well. And I think the flavour can be fractionally better with it. I do think the flavour can be fractionally better with it. It's not leaps and bounds by any means. It's just fractional for me. Um, oh, it's not like comparing it to black mesh or anything like that. But. but but I do find that it's it's this much, and then as Worm said, you start to dry out on a silica wick, and you kind of you can still vape it, and you've got a good five or ten puffs if you're using a dripper that is um, before you kind of get a dry hit, and it's like okay, bang some juice in there. Um, but you usually would drip before you get a dry hit. With this, it's kind of like it's oversaturated slightly from the start. Then you get a butter zone. Then it's literally a case of it's it is woolly, it is woolly, and it's weird because it is silica, <coughs> but it cuts like a wall does, and obviously it's eco wall, so you expect it to. Yeah. Um, but it tastes woolly for me, uh, and it does that before you would get a dry hit on equivalent juice with silica, so you end up dripping more but less at the same time because you're doing three drops, getting a butter zone, puffing, three drops, getting a butter zone, silica, ten drops, puff, 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 dry hit, ten drops. That's how how I found it to be for me anyway. Um. We haven't tried this in a tank as of yet, so this could be extremely well if that butter zone holds on the tank. It could be epically good. Something like an Evod head, them kind of like, I could see them because obviously they do suffer in flavour compared to a lot of your RD, RBDs, RBAs. Um, with that in there, as long as you didn't choke the wick, I'd imagine you've got a very, very nice um, upgrade, if you like, yeah. on the standard um, head, but then re-wicking them with silica yourself is an upgrade to it anyway. So. How much? We don't know. Um, we haven't re-wicked any bod head with it. We haven't done a tank with it, so we, we can't tank. honestly say. But like I said, we will drop it in the comments when we do eventually do it, which we probably will do in the next couple of weeks or so. We will be trying it in other stuff and playing around with it a lot more. So I mean, we played around with it for what is our most used devices, and they are drippers, uh, and we can gauge a lot quicker whether something is dropping or increasing in a dripper than we can for anything else, just because we use them all the time, pretty much. Yes. So, we're piling off of everything, haven't we? Kind of. Um, Is there anything you want to touch on? Canful ribbon, really, oh, basically. Right. Um, obviously, most of the guys, canful ribbon on silica. Is obviously you can use it, and I have used it with, with what I've considered quite a bit of success. I put some ribbon straight in my A7.5. 
um, ribbon, four wraps, in the A7, I've got 0 .8, 0 0.8 ohm coil, uh, run it on the mechanical, and honestly, the thing was running lovely for me. I was really enjoying it. It was probably one of my most enjoyable vapes from the A7 with the camper ribbon. The vapor was gorgeous. Um, a lot of the kind of rebuilds you see this kind of stuff on will be um, your mesh setups or your sort of mesh rope hybrid whips and stuff like that. Um, I have got a mesh rope hybrid whip with some canthal ribbon around 0.5 and an RSST. Also got the Arga um, with so just some of the 400 grade mesh to try to sit down with some 28 gauge canthal on it. Um, now, what? Would they work on here? No chance. <laughs> <laughs> There's <laughs> absolutely no chance of them working on anything with a chipset in it. Um, the 28 gauge canthal, I believe last time I tested this, this was around about uh, one ohm. Um, it's on like the, the Arga. Right, uh, let's see, it's 28 gauge around some mesh. Uh, I've got the mice, so I'm going to do the fuckers. Um, <laughs> right, let's just come down it. a bit. Hey, it's tight. Okay, that is my 28 gauge on the, the mesh, trying to sit down, and it's right away just the thing. Do you want to tell me what that one is? Uh, that is the RSST with a mesh rope hybrid wick in the. Uh, oh, sorry, with the 0.5 around it, and yes, I believe 0. that 5. was a similar ohms. I believe it was 1.1. Now it does take a second to heat up on the silica right other than on the um, stainless steel wick. But is your battery full? Pretty much. Let me feel more. Because that is not sparking up my mind. <laughs> You've got tobacco in here, haven't you? Yes, I have got tobacco flavour in there. Um, right, sorry guys, just making sure before we uh, go, yeah. Right, this is it on my. No, well, not doing anything, has it? <laughs> <laughs> I might have adjusted, I might have knocked that something out. Sorry, guys, one second. Yeah, you've screwed, have you unscrewed this or screwed this down or something? Yeah. My dear God, where's your gold screwdriver? Sorry, guys, my brings back into focus whilst I'm playing around and working chat with you. Apparently, I broke it, I don't know how. You just touch these things and they break. Autofocus has gone ballistic, sorry guys. There's no autofocus on. It was on. You. I just turned it on because it's easy to reset the focus. If you're <laughs> Such a monge. But uh, yeah, apparently I broke his coil and um, good times. <laughs> good times for my arse. How have you loosened this up so much? You've basically undone the entire screw on the RSST. I tightened it under one device and undid it. So this is what happens when you touch your stuff. The thing is, with the RSST and with most of these kind of devices, oh my dear Christ! All well, I want to do, no. All I want to do is show the peoples. Show the peoples. No, I broke it. Broke it. Come Sorry, on. guys. <laughs> Honestly. So, what did you say anyway? Before I have no idea. I'm about to repair devices live. Oh my God! I need something else. Give me some other stuff. <laughs> I need, I need another screwdriver mean? or something. That's the only you... screwdriver I have. Oh my dear God. Fuck. Professional as always, guys. Um, what was I going to touch on? I was going to touch on Zach, but I completely forgot since I've destroyed your stuff. Um, this, is, this is why it doesn't touch it. It's just. Right, there we go. We're back. <sighs> Sorry, guys. Incredibly poor from well, both of us, really, but many of them. I'm blaming him because I can. All right, that is the uh, ribbon on the RSST. All right, now, personally, we'll get back in the focus. Um, I, for rebuilding batteries like this, using sort of your mesh and your, your rope wicks, I rate ribbon so much higher than I rate standard cantho. Um, you've got to bear in mind that. I said they're about the same. I don't actually think they are from memory. I'm just going to test them on one Ferrari. Ferrari. Um, <laughs> which, which is going to take me a month and a half. It's not going to take me a month. It's about five times. I, know, but I always felt past it. Right, 1.2 ohms on the RSST. On the Arga, we are on a lot less than that, I'd imagine. Well, it's quiet, so you can't be. Low. It's just slow. It just says low. So a sub ohm. I'd imagine on. I think I tested it on something that would re register it, and it was something like 0.8. So I was lying at the start. So they were similar. Um, but you see the vapor that come off them, 
um, wasn't too dissimilar. Now, I prefer low risk coils, I always have done. We seem to find with these rebuild rules on mesh because you've got the, um, the width of the actual wire going around, touching more of the mesh than the actual powerful normal standard wire can, it just seems to break a lot better. I, 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 yeah, I just can't really add anything. So the vapor you get off it for, I mean, you get a, um, good job. Uh, you, get a, um, you get a sub ohm coil, sort of 0.8 with that 28 gauge can fall, um, and it kicks off the vapor fine. If you put a four wrap coil similar in a, in the same device, um, you can go up by half an ohm and it still outperforms it. Um, so it depends on how you like to run things like that. Personally, I'd like the ohms that I've got on the Arga with the ribbon. Um, so get them lower and lower and lower and just get it absolutely kicking it out ridiculously. Um, most people aren't like me. I am a bit abnormal uh, when it comes to this. Worm makes a point of 10 minutes every time I wrap anything. Um, but the options are there for you to do it if that's what you choose to do. Personally, I prefer 1.2 ohm with a ribbon than I would a 0.8 uh, sorry, point eight, yeah, point eight ohm with the 28 gauge cam for it just performs better. The flavor seems a bit better for me, uh, and the vapor is just so incredibly thick, even though your ohms have gone up. Um, so, yeah, I love the ribbon, I really do, really love the ribbon. I think that's pretty much all I'm going to be using from now on. Um, I've got which is a shame because we've got about fucking 150 meters of cam, <laughs> um, and, and a load more other stuff as well to use. But, um, ribbon's definitely been the one for me, uh, and I know that a lot of the guys on the Facebook page that, um, was speaking to and said yeah you should give it a go um they absolutely love it as well so to be stuff. fair i've been pretty much predominantly using the three mil uh three point three mil uh, ribbon as well so you kind of like that didn't you i love the three there you go i mean look, it's a bit too high for me on most of my devices but certain ones it is there but even on the three mil you get the ohms of your point two your 32 gauge can though which most are used to, used to um without so without sorry with uh, the benefit that you're going to vaporize more juice quickly Yes. Uh, which I think is good. As long as you get your uh, coil right, especially with silica, with the ribbon, obviously uh, you can if you do it too tight, and I mean like, it only has to be slightly fractional over to tightness, and it will dry up that uh, silica before it can uh, reduce itself. So you actually get like, if, as long as you're doing like one second pause, you'll, you'll be fine. But if you're doing like three, four, like we do, sometimes five, six second pools, <laughs> <laughs> you, you're talking that you're just getting burnt hit after like two or three lessons, seconds. So it's, you've got to get that wrapping technique a little bit more down than you would have to with your standard cowpole. But once you've got it, the thing it just performs so well. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, with the point three as well, unlike the point, more the point five than the point four, but the point five, you notice it more. If you're using something like um, an Igo F and Igo L, something with screws to hold that positive and negative in, the the 0.5 doesn't seem too much thicker until you try and put it under a screw and it wants to bend up on you or whatever and you can, you kind of wrapping it around and you're trying to get it to sit on properly. It's a little bit more fiddly than a 28 gauge can for would do, for example. Um, but in my opinion, definitely worth that little bit of extra effort it takes to wrap it. I'm actually really, really looking forward to wrapping the K-Fun in the um, ribbon. The only reason I didn't do it when we did this uh, this free week is because it was on camera and showing people how to do it. I didn't want it to cock up. Um, basically, I was it would I be tried to get right to get to there, but you wouldn't do it. So. I'll do it next time. Which might be all. Yeah. Um, now, my preference of the silica wick and the eco wool, I prefer silica wick. I just do. I think the flavour is a bit better off it across the board, um, and I like. I just like the way it works. I just prefer it. I don't know why, because the distinction between the both isn't massive. It's just you've got your preference. That would be mine. I prefer the silica as well. But if all I had was eco wool. If it, it still performs. I oh, wouldn't be sorry about it. Just as well, if not slightly better when you've got it in that butter zone. Like we said, if we, if we get this, once we get this into a tank system and try it out on there and it stays in the butter zone, might be switching over to that for my tanks. But for drippers and that, stick with your silica. It's, um, it's a lot more forgiving. It can be. Don't wrong. Uh, uh, try it. At the end of the day, try it um, and find your preference. Um, it is one of those that you will just find. I mean, a lot of people like to use uh, cotton um, as uh, wicking material, and I've read a lot of sort of up and down about that. Now, the thing is with cotton, um, I haven't tried it, to be honest with you. One of the main reasons I haven't tried it is because there isn't real danger when it comes to that stuff setting on fire in your atty. Um, Especially seems to juice is flammable as well. It, yeah, exactly, and the cotton is not heat resistant like the silica is. So for me, I don't think that's worth the risk, and... I am a risk taker, but there's, there, there is limits, and when things start to catch on fire, that's just not for me, um, generally. 
So with the wool, you kind of get the, the wool of the cotton wool without the, as much danger for it, do you know what I mean? I don't think it's like a, a bad thing. I think it's, um, it, it's, it's a really nice little uh, change of pace kind of, because uh, like I say, it is easier to get into your drippers and stuff, and it is easier. To, I, I, I just still feel it's a little bit uh, more forgiving when you're handling it. It's not going to unfray on you as quick. If you can get this thing in the butter zone and keep it there in a tank system, it does beat silica hands down. But for like drippers at the moment, you can't beat silica in it. I'm sorry, but you but to keep it in that butter zone, like Mr. Farron says, it's just it's a lot more work than just dripping normally with silica. Even still, that butter zone doesn't forgive the the fact that it can't hold it. No, it just it just doesn't. And, and but in a tank, it could. Yeah, I don't know about that. We don't know. That. I, I, we don't know, but I. I'd play for my bet that I would have a lot more luck with silica, and even if it did go well with the eco water, I'd still probably prefer silica. But again, guys, try it. You're not going to know until you do. We're only trying to give you what our opinions are on it. Um, I think Worm likes the wall a bit more than I do. I'm yeah. not his biggest fan. I just I like silica, and I I like the fact that silica tastes the way that I want it to. The eco just doesn't for me. But it is what it is. You're not going to know until you try it. There are a lot of people that love it, and you may be one of those. It's worth a go for two pound fifty. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> you have a little experiment. Worst case is it's some backup. So yeah, I think we're pretty much done guys for what was going to be a quick video, unless you've got something else you want to touch on? No, I think that's it. I think I was just like, having a quick little think while you was doing your little build up to the outro and I think we touched on everything. I mean, yeah. Definitely recommend Campbell Ribbon. Oh, definitely Campbell Ribbon. Recommend you try Eco Wall, but it's not my preference um, or yours. You do, you do like it though, don't you? I, I, I do you like can't it. visual preference, it's just you, in certain things. Yeah. It's, it's one of those. <laughs> it is. So it's something you'll prefer ribbon, something you'll prefer normal candle. For worm, that's eco warm silica. For me, I'll stick with silica, thanks. Um, yeah, that's the whole point of rebuilders, though. Try Do it. it how you want it. Try it and see how you go. Um, thank you, Charlie, for sending this down to us, lovely bloke. Um, obviously, go ahead and check out his site. Those of you guys watching videos know that we always uh, recommend going to Charlie. Um, so, yeah, very go good. and have a look. Very, very good service from Charlie. Uh, and happy to help. Um, I think we're done, guys. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Mr. Proton. This has been the worm. Thank you, guys. We'll see.